Good afternoon. Just wanted to do a quick video about my watering practices when it comes to tropical fruit trees and some of the sciences behind um, watering, basically. Uh, I mean, watering a tree sounds simple, but it's actually a bit more complicated than that. So before I actually water it, I wanted to talk about where, where my water comes from. I mean, your water would be different. You'll want to check up with your um, water company. According to the latest water report uh, for my water service, the tap water that I, I use to water all my tree, the, the pH is about 7.8 which is more alkaline than the tropical trees like to be. Tropical fruit trees prefer a, a pH of between six and six and a half. So, which would mean anytime I'm, I'm watering it, a, a tree that is, it, it, it's somewhat hindering the growth. But now I do have other methods which counteracts that and we're talking heavily amending the, the soil when planting a tree. Uh, in, in the case of uh, container trees, um, incorporating a lot of peat moss of course, which slowly acidifies the soil. So those are the methods that I use to counteract the alkaline uh, water that comes out of my faucets. So pH, okay. You and I, we like our water to be a bit more alkaline. I mean, the, the craze, the health craze now is this particular water, the, look at the pH, nine and a half. pH is, the, the numbers, the pH is on a scale, what's known as a logarithmic scale, which would mean, so, for example, the, the tropical trees, let's say it likes um, a pH to be 6, okay? Um, if your water is, say, I mean, mine is close to 8, so we'll just round it to 8. From, from 6 to 7 pH, 7 is 10 times more alkaline than 6. However, from 6 to 8, 8 is 100 times more alkaline than 6. You see where I'm going? So that's just the scale that they use. This is great for you and I. Not so great for tropical fruit trees. So which is why, again, you want to heavily amend the soil when planting. For, for reference, when it rains, rainwater is generally five to five and a half on a pH, which is awesome for these uh, trees. So think about it, the, our soil in the Central Valley is generally between seven and a half to eight. Uh, you know, in my area, because I've been heavily amending the soil for years, uh, I've got it down to about between six and a half to seven or so ish but in your case if you don't uh, if you just have plain old clay dirt you're probably going to have a soil level of eight so in the continental u.s there are s s uh, certain portions of the u.s that have lower ph soil than we do so think about it why is that it's really the rain that causes your soil to be at the pH that it is. In Visalia, it, it rain, our annual rainfall is about 11 inches. Not a whole lot. Compare that to, say, the jungles of Southeast Asia, where they normally average about 80 inches. Compare that to the Amazon rainforest, which they generally average about 120 inches. Those numbers don't seem like a lot, okay? But I want to convey this to you. So here we are. 
that's our annual rainfall, okay? Jungles of um, Southeast Asia. So 80 inches, okay? Right here. I mean, that is a lot of rainwater, which is why the soil over there is generally about five to six, which these tropicals love. So we don't get a whole lot of rain, which would translate to me having to water these trees uh, quite often, just because many of the tropical fruit trees prefer their soil to be on the moist side of things. Um, so, yeah, just water it when you, when your, when your tree looks like they need some water. In my case, I do water quite often. I mean, your scenario will be a lot different than mine, depending on if it's cloudy, depending on if it's windy. Um, so I'm not going to give you any uh, suggestions on, on how often to water. But I will say though, the best time to water it is in midday when the trees need the water. The second best would be uh, morning. Uh, and then, you know, third best would be um, evenings. But, um, so to, to determine how much water a tree needs, you basically, uh, just a, a good rule of thumb is a tr you should water, you should give uh, a tree the same amount of water as it is in a container. Uh, for example, okay, um, let's just focus on this um, a llama here. It's in a um, 20 gallon container, okay, which means I generally give it about 20 gallons worth of water. And how I determine the amount of water that's flowing out of my hose is you take a five gallon bucket, you fill it up from bottom to top and time it. If it takes me two minutes to fill it up to five gallons, uh, then that means two minutes worth of me running the hose, that's five gallons. So in this case, you know, that's um, eight minutes. So just running the hose for eight minutes on this particular tree. So th that's, how, that's how you can gauge how much water to give a tree. Uh, in-ground trees, it, it, it's going to vary. I mean, in-ground trees are a, a bit more forgiving just because it, when you look at my tree, they are so densely planted next to each other that I don't really have to water that often. When I water a, a spot, a lot of the trees nearby get it as well. Same with um, when I water these containers here, okay? This um, Vietnamese guava also gets a lot of water from it just due to the sh uh, um, proximity of the containers there. So there are certain trees that like water and then there are certain trees that don't, they, they like water, however they don't like their feet to be wet as in standing water. Mangoes notoriously do not like the feet to be wet, which would mean the growing medium that you are going to put it in, it, it needs to drain really, really well. Another tree that I find that does not like wet feet are jackfruits. These guys do not like wet feet at all. They want the soil to drain away from the roots. Uh, on the other hand, jaboticaba, no problem at all with the wet feet. Uh, you don't want to drown it, but these guys can take the water, uh, you know, same with uh, bananas and, and, and many of the nonas, uh, especially the sour sap. Those trees love water. Uh, also guavas, of course, you know, guavas, you, you can't overwater them. Uh, these guys love water. So I wanted to show you um, in addition to just um, getting water from the city, I, I have these filters. I mean, these are cheapy Amazon basic filters. They supposedly um, 
filter out heavy metal uh, along with a bunch of other chemicals that's not very good for the uh, microorganisms that's in the ground. I don't really know if it actually works, but for the price that I've got it for, they're basically 10 bucks a piece and I pay them annually. I mean, why not? So, and I'll be sure to put the, the description in the, 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 well, the link in the description if you wanted it. Um, so, trees, like you and I, when it gets hot, they sweat, basically, do a process called uh, transpiration. I did, a, uh, I did an experiment yesterday. Check it out. <coughs> Ziploc bag, okay? Poor guy. It's been there. Uh, but he should be okay. Yesterday, 3.30, right around this time. This is how much water this guy, this particular section of the branch swept. That's a lot of water. So this is how much water this tree is evaporating, basically, just from this section. Another one. Banana. All right. Maybe a third of the leaves here. All right, here it goes. <coughs> Same time. Well, let's, let's see how much water there is. And that's a very small section of the leaves. This is how much water that particular section of the leaf sweated, basically. So, you want to water your trees. Basically, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, there is a particular method, though, I wanted to show you when it comes to how you water a tree. Actually, let me go and just turn on the hose really quick. So, to, to water a, a tree, you actually want to water around the canopy of the tree, basically. The, the, uh, the, for exa okay, so this tropical pink, okay. It's a good sized tree. It's uh, about four years old, uh, in the ground that is. Uh, just quick change of topic. I, 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 I'm a huge fan of these uh, filters. It just simply floods everything, as opposed to uh, just hosing everything off. But, um, <clears throat> this is how you should water a tree. So this is the drip line. Basically right underneath us where I'm standing. This is usually where the roots are. It, it really extends this far. So all you do is just really just put it here. Maybe let it run for 10 minutes. Move it to another spot. That's really it. It's not a whole lot to it. For containers, what I do is simply just let it flood and then let it and then let it slowly leach down to the bottom and then we start the cycle again. So you've got to think these tropical fruit trees, wax jambu, they they originate from a, a, a an environment where it basically rains a lot. I mean, again, 80 inches worth of rain. So these guys are ev th these particular trees have evolved to liking water, needing water. The mamesa pote, okay. Y you really cannot overwater this particular tree given that you've got good soil, that is. But uh, almost all the tropical fruit trees basically expect it to rain, you know, every other day, basically. Um, so you're just going to have to do your best to uh, keep watering them. So <clears throat> that's really it. It's just 
not a whole lot to it, but there are some sciences behind how you water a tree and the effects that you, uh, the pH, which is the big thing, have on tropical fruit trees. Um, so in addition to pH, I should also note some water sources, municipal water sources, have contaminants, uh, salt, for example, uh, which is not a good thing for trees, mangoes especially. Many tropical fruit trees do not like salt. Fortunately, looking at my water company's report, our salt is virtually non-existent. Our salt is 16 parts per million, which is virtually non-existent. There are municipal company water services out there that, based on where they get the water from, I've seen them as high as a thousand parts per million in salt. Mango trees, the tolerance for salt in water is about two to three hundred. So which translates to anytime you're watering a mango tree, you're kind of slowly killing it. So I mean I, I would encourage you to look up the water quality reports from your company. But um, you know, just that's real it. Um, so yeah, watering. I mean, it, it's it's it is basically key to keeping your tropicals alive. More than food. I mean, more than fertilizing it. How long can you, as a human being, live without water versus living without food? So, all right. Have a good afternoon.